1942, the United States was locked in a world war with Nazi Germany and the Empire of Japan. Setbacks across the Pacific were taking their toll on the U.S. forces and the morale of the American people. It was then that the Army and Navy set forth with an audacious plan to strike at Japan. It was a, a bold move that uh, just showed that we could and we would fight back. With no air base close enough to Japan to launch bomber attacks from, our armed forces would make their own. The Army would load 16 of their B-25 bombers onto the Navy's USS Hornet aircraft carrier. The floating air base would then sail to within 400 miles of Japan and launch the bombers. After the attack, there would be no way for the B-25s to land back on the Hornet, so they would continue on to land in China, a strong ally in the Pacific War. The plan was filled with risk. No aircraft of this size had ever been launched from an aircraft carrier. No one was sure the bombers could penetrate the Japanese air defenses or find their safe haven runways in China. The man to lead the mission was none other than the famed pilot and air racer, Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle. Doolittle made a name for himself in the 1930s, making pioneering flights for the U.S. Army Air Corps. Doolittle set speed and endurance records, pushing aircraft and aeronautic theories to their limits. In 1929, Jimmy Doolittle became the first pilot to take off, fly, and land using instruments alone, helping to revolutionize modern flight. After air racing the world's most advanced aircraft, Doolittle turned his attention to the looming war in Europe helping the Allies build up their air power. When the dangerous raid on Japan was planned, Doolittle volunteered to lead the mission. Colonel Doolittle trained his all-volunteer team to get their B-25s airborne in less than 450 feet, less than a quarter of the recommended distance. After the raiders departed the States, Colonel Doolittle announced that their target was Japan and that he would be going with them. They followed a leader who was probably one of the greatest air leaders of all time, Jimmy Doolittle, who had a reputation uh, as a racing pilot of being maybe a maverick, but not so. General Doolittle was a graduate of MIT with a doctorate. He may have flown airplanes, but he was also was a master of the calculated risk. <laughs> That's Jimmy Doolittle, quite a guy. As the task force approached Japan, they were spotted by a Japanese patrol boat. Fearing attack, Doolittle decided to launch the mission over 400 miles farther out than their intended launch point. In rough seas, Colonel Jimmy Doolittle in Raider No. 1 gunned his engines and released the brakes. Upon arriving over Japan, the 16 B-25s released their bombs, causing minimal damage. The effect of the action on morale, however, was enormous on both sides. It was an unbelievable mission impossible. Who would have ever thought that medium bombers would be taken off from the short deck of a Navy carrier? and fly the distance they had to fly and, and try to survive it after the mission was over. Most of the raiders made it to the safety of China, crashing near the coast. One crew made it to Russia, 
and two were captured by the Japanese, where three crew members were executed, and the rest held as prisoners of war. The Chinese helped Colonel Doolittle and his raiders evade the Japanese and escape back to the United States. For America, the morale boost came at a welcome time in the war. For Japan, the raid gave the Empire their first thoughts of doubt and changed their defensive strategy for the rest of the war. It was a psychological blow to the Japanese and a morale boost, unprecedented morale boost to the United States. Most of the raiders served in other theaters of combat for the remaining three years of war. Lieutenant Colonel Doolittle was promoted two grades to Brigadier General and awarded the Medal of Honor. 